Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader, and it does my heart well to see you uh, via Zoom all together this morning on this wonderful day. We welcome Pastor Mike back from a couple weeks off, and we also are going to be welcoming a new member today, uh, Jim Husband. So thanks again for being here. Let's just take a moment to prepare for worship. When we begin today, you will notice a little bit, something a little bit different. Our ELCA Churchwide has put together a service for us that helps us to claim our responsibility in racism, and that will be confessed in our words this morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As church, we confess the sin of racism and condemn race, racist rhetoric and the ideolo ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. God have mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support police that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous people established racism in the United States, a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. God, God have mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement and the disappropriation incarceration of color of people god have mercy god have mercy as church we lament this institutional racism of discriminatory treatment within the call process inequitable compensation for clergy of color racial segregation divestment from black communities and congregations, systemic, systemic policies and and organizational practices and a failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of black people, indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions. Actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. of the whole world for the well-being 
of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. This is the feast of victory for. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the book of Genesis, the first and second chapters. At the beginning of time, God the creator, God the powerful word, and God the life-giving spirit formed the earth and all its inhabitants. God sees that all this created work is good and then rests on the seventh day. Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 4, 8. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, 
let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, bat cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every green plant, and every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the bread of life, breath of life, 
I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 8, and I invite you to read along with me. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands and have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second lesson is from the book of 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Paul closes a challenging letter to the Corinthians with an appeal to Christian fellowship grounded in the triune harmony of Christ's grace, God's love, and the Spirit's partnership. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I want to invite kids to come up to the screen right now. We're doing this a little bit different because our presiding bishop is preaching for us today. And so I get to uh, give you a children's message before that time. Why are we, what's everything, all right over there? Everything okay over there? I mean, c come on in, Pastor Randy. How are we doing, kids? It's good to see you. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, and I miss seeing you guys. So we're going to get to hear our gospel lesson, which our presiding bishop will read, but I want to read one of the lines. But first I want to ask you, right now in our life and in our world, what things scare you? Think about that. I don't know if you can respond out loud or not, but think about what scares you right now? I know we're in this world where we're worried about a virus, this thing that we can't see with our eyes, but that can get inside of our bodies and make us really sick, and even end the lives of people. We're worried about protests because of the mistreatment of certain individuals in our country, and that gives us fear. But I want you to hear these words from Jesus. These words 
that Jesus says to his disciples as he prepares them to go out into a scary, scary world. He says to them at the end, and remember, he says, remember, never forget, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus never leaves you. Jesus never abandons you and promises to always be with you. And so as you think about those things that are scary to you, as I think about this pandemic, as I think about the reasons why people are protesting in the streets, I am comforted in knowing and remembering that Christ is always with us. Always with us. And will never abandon us. Amen. Let's pray real quick before we go to the presiding bishop's sermon. Oh, Lord Christ, send your Holy Spirit into this world and show us your justice and peace. Push away those fears in our hearts and fill them with you. Because with you, we can end these injustices. With you, empowering doctors and scientists, we can find a vaccine and we can cure. With you, we can end those things that separate us, that divide us. Heavenly Father, we trust that your Son is always with us to the end of the age. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a, hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. 
God is not a lone ranger. And all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship, within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God, and God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd the breath of life God had given to him. And now, church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. 
And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together, in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Will you please join us in singing the Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth, found in our brochure.
Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Jim Husband, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as a new member into the life and ministry of our Savior, Lutheran Church. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Brother in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, please say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Jim in his life in Christ? We, we do. do. And we ask God to help and guide us. We have a gift as we welcome you into our parish. Let us welcome Jim in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news of the world. Welcome. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest especially Mayors Tony Rozworski and John Dennis. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. 
provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities, Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially Herb, Candy, Joe, Jason, Phil and Shirley, Rosalie and Paul, Chuck, Mary, Jeff, John, Beth, Denise, Pastor Judy, Barb, Christy, Tom, Charlotte, Donna, Jesse, Helmut and Carol, John, Katie, Megan and Andrew, Kim, Joe, Lynn, Connor and Mason, Jim, Ben, and Everett. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment and share that peace with those around you. I want to take, want to take this time to direct people to prepare their tables, make sure that you have your proper bread and your proper wine for this time of Holy Communion. And I want to also thank people for continuing to support the ministry through tithing and those who are able to come in and help lead in our worship service. I want to now direct us to hearing an offering that was tried to give last week, as I understand, but we had some technical difficulties. And so now we are going to hear the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians sing for us, O Day Full of Grace.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, broke it, and blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and blessed it and gave it to them all to drink, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is my blood shed for you in the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord Christ, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So come to this table, you who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his body and blood. Strength and keep and unite us, now and forever. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed Amen. Amen. Let us now join together in our sending hymn, found in the red hymnal, hymn number 525, also found in your printed materials.
please join me in prayer. Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the exclamations of Holy Spirit, given in calls of uncertainty, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work, which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that tends towards justice, we pray. Grant us wisdom. Give us courage for the facing of these days by the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom, and we share in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Holy Tree, the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.